Passover is almost here. Hold on to your yarmulke because I'm going to take you through the entire Passover Seder, the Passover dinner, and share with you the most insightful, inspiring, and amazing concepts that are so relevant for your life. My name is Rabbi Yitzwine of the Young Israel Asia Las Vegas, and I want to welcome you to Life is Great, where every Sunday morning we get together and explore a new universal value that is derived from Judaism. All right, so here we are today talking about Passover. Now remember, Passover is one of the most significant days in all of humanity. Just by way of a quick review of concepts we discussed with you last week, we understand that Passover is the birthday of the Jewish people. That's right. There were no Jews before Passover. You had Abraham, you had Isaac, you had Jacob. Those were the fathers of the Jewish people. And then you had a group of people called B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. Those were the ones who were enslaved to Paro, the king of Egypt at that time. And then when God sent his messenger, Moses, Moses took the Jewish people out of Egypt to the, towards the promised land, that as the Jewish people stood at Mount Sinai, received the Ten Commandments, received the entire Torah. When they accepted upon themselves the obligation of the mitzvahs, the obligation of all the commandments, then they became the Jewish people. Passover is the holiday that we commemorate that event. But it's even deeper than that. It's more significant on a personal level. For we say that when God created the universe, every single day in the calendar contained a particular opportunity. The opportunity that presents itself at this time of year is the opportunity of cherus, or freedom. Freedom it manifests itself on an individual level and a national level. The national manifestation of the concept of freedom was when the Jewish people were redeemed from a house of bondage, from a house of slavery, and became free to serve the Almighty. The manifestation on, of freedom on a personal level is when you and I understand what is holding us back. What is our vice? What is the thing that's stopping us, our Achilles heel, so to speak, that if left unchecked, it will destroy our lives. But many times we play with it. Sometimes we control that vice. Sometimes the vice controls us. And therefore we live lives not really to our fullest potential, but we live our lives to a more mediocre potential. And that struggle is addressed on the holiday of Passover. There are two major symbols of Passover. One is the symbol of bread. Bread is the thing that we do not eat on Passover. Bread in the Torah is called chametz. Chametz, le leavened, it takes the form of, it's anything made of wheat, barley, spelt, oats, or rye, left in contact with water, unmanipulated for 18 minutes or more. Bread can take, this chametz is symbolic of laziness. It's symbolic of ego and arrogance. It can take form of physical, like bread, pasta, cereal. It can also take a form in liquid form, like beer or whiskey. What is the thing about bread? We say it's pompous, it's arrogant. It's very big, but there's not much substance. I've always wanted to do this right now. Let me show you what happens when we squeeze bread. It becomes nothing. It's arrogant. It's e our ego. This is what we want to get rid of on Passover. And when we're done with it, we're done with it. So we have to see, we have to understand that bread is the thing we have to replace. Get it out of our system in the week of Passover. And we replace it with matzah. Matzah is the symbol of freedom. It's a symbol of slavery and freedom. It's lechem oni, it's poor man's bread because it's just flour and water baked fast. But it's a symbol of freedom in that I get back to basics. I understand this is what I'm living for. This is what's most important in my life. If I don't have the, all that extraneous puffiness and egoness and arrogance and laziness, and I get back to basics in my life, what am I living for? Then I can become free. Now, your Passover Seder, your Passover dinner, is directed by this, a Haggadah. A Haggadah is the basic text that Jews, since around 
the sixth century have been using in order to fulfill the commandments of Passover evening. In Passover evening, there's a few different commandments we need to fulfill. We need to eat matzah. And you, when we, we'll talk about you should need to eat, if you're using one of these matzahs, you, you need to eat a minimum of two-thirds of one of these matzahs in order to fill the commandment from the Torah to eat matzah on the first night of Passover. And you also need to tell the story of the Jewish people leaving Egypt to whomever you can on that night. And that story is recorded here in the Haggadah. So what I would like to do with you right now is to go through the Haggadah, explain exactly some of the major concepts, and give you insights that you can share with the people at your Passover dinner. And don't worry, if you aren't Jewish and you're not going to a Passover dinner, these concepts will be so relevant to you, you probably will tell them over and over and over to your friends and your family in such a way that you'll say, boy, I should have been Jewish. <laughs> Okay, so let's go through these. Let's go through the Haggadah. All right, so let's begin the Passover Seder. The first thing you need is a good Haggadah. The Haggadah is, again, their guidebook. It literally means the storyteller that will help you lead the Seder and go through this wonderful dinner. I choose this one. It's the Art Scroll Youth Haggadah. First of all, it has some nice pictures in it. Next of all, it has a very good English translation, very usable translation. You'll notice that there are 15 steps at the beginning to the Haggadah, to the Seder. The word Seder means order. And if I want personal freedom, if I want to really connect with who I am, I have to do it in an orderly fashion. There are 15 steps, just like there are 15 steps that would, were placed at the base of the Beis HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, that stood in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. As the Jews would ascend these 15 steps, they would say a special chapter from the Book of Psalms. And each, with each step they would go up, they would ascend to a, a higher level of spirituality. That's what we're doing as we go through these 15 stages as well. We're to ascend. Every stage leads us to a deeper understanding of our own personal freedom. Please join me as I go through each step. The first step is Kadesh. Kadesh literally means to sanctify. We're going to take a cup of wine, and a cup of wine has to be a full cup of wine. Eventually, through the Seder, you'll have four cups of wine. When we, after we recite the appropriate blessings, we're going to drink the entire cup of wine. Yes, minimum of 3.3 ounces. And when we drink it, we drink it leaning to our left-hand side. There's a beautiful custom to have somebody else pour the cup of wine for you, and there is a special custom also used to use red wine. It's symbolic to remind us of the, the, the blood of the Jewish people that was spilled uh, when, uh, when the Egyptians were oppressing us. Anyway, this particular blessing has three blessings. A blessing on the wine, a blessing on what it means to be Jewish. And I remember before, Passover is the birthday of the Jewish people. The most important thing to understand on a birthday is to know who you are. It's interesting, a lot of people celebrate birthdays, but you know, every time you celebrate a birthday, aren't you just celebrating that you're one step closer to death? That doesn't sound fun to celebrate, but when we celebrate a birthday, we say, look at one more year of accomplishment. So we're stopping, we're looking this, we're gonna say, we bless you, Hashem our God. Hashem is God, that's the name that we refer to God. The king of the whole world, because you chose us as your special nation from all the other nations in the world. And this idea that the Jewish people are a chosen people, it's chosen for what? Chosen to bring ethical monotheism into the world. Chosen to be a light into the nations. Chosen to, to lead and to try and perfect the world. That's what life is about. That's why we're getting rid of the chametz for all week long. Getting rid of the bread. Rid of the laziness. Rid of the ego. Rid, rid of getting rid of the arrogance. We're going to get rid of that. We'll focus on our back to basics. I'm part of a chosen species. A chosen people. I'm a special person. I have a mission in this world and I have to work hard to accomplish it. And then the next blessing we write, we, we say over here is, we bless you, Hashem, our God, King of the whole world, for keeping us alive and taking care of us and bringing us to the season. This is the time, this is the time when we bless the Almighty and thank Him that we're alive. It's the Shechianu prayer. And if you want to become free, you have to live with joy. 
you got to feel gratitude that the Almighty is keeping you alive in whatever situation you're in. Whatever situation you're in now, it is a better situation than it could have been. Remember, when the Jewish people were enslaved in Egypt, that was like living in Auschwitz in a concentration camp. And then they were led out to a very high place to become a chosen people, a light to the nations. So too, this is a day where we have to remember also, we have great potential to do magnificent things. That's the end of stage one. The next step is, that, is the step of Urchatz. Urchatz is when we wash our hands. And wash our hands to, in a certain sense to say, you know what, let me get rid of the feelings of inferiority that I might have. See, sometimes the reason we don't grasp our purpose in life and our, our part of our national mission, sometimes the reason that we don't do really magnificent things in our, in our, in our world is because we're, we don't feel we're adequate. We think, listen, let somebody else do it. Maybe someone else is more qualified. So as we sit at our Seder table, a table that we remember, the majesty of the Almighty and our, our basic purpose in life, we have to wash away all those feelings of inadequacy. The third stage is carpus. Carpus is when we take a vegetable that grew from the ground, like celery or parsley, and we look, we dip it in salt water, salt water reminiscent of the tears the Jewish people shed when they were being oppressed in Egypt. And we say, hey, listen, you piece of celery, you little piece, you came up from the ground, you lowly little vegetable. You were lowly and now you are on a Seder table. You are on a, on a, on a royal table, a table that's celebrating freedom to serve the Almighty and to reach our potential. And I say, wow, if that little, if that piece of vegetable that came up the ground, it was lowly, it can rise to the place of a Seder table. Me too. There are times when I feel lowly and I feel that I'm captured by my vices, or I'm captured by my demons. But you know what? Tonight is a night when I lift myself up. And as I lift myself up, I'm going to elevate the world with me. The next section is yachatz. Yachatz is when you take the middle matzah and you break it. Now this is the matzah most of you are familiar with. Okay? But this is the matzah that I use in my house. It's shmura matzah, sent over from Israel, handmade, very expensive. This matzah is called a poor man's bread. If you buy enough of it, you might become poor. But also, we take the middle matzah, and we're going to break it into half and put away a big chunk of it. When we take the bigger chunk, we wrap it up and put it away, that, in a real sense, is making poor man's bread. See, a poor man is always worried about the future. So at this stage of our Passover dinner, we are not yet free. We haven't broken free from our insecurities. So we are, in a certain sense, like poor men. So we put it to the side. See, a person who knows that God runs the world, they don't worry about the future. They understand they might prepare for the future, but they don't have that sense of worry, that sense of, of insecurity. And that's something that we're going to work on throughout the evening. The next stage is the Magid. Magid is when we are going to fulfill the commandment of telling over our to our children the story of the Jewish people leaving Egypt. So this is, the first, this is the first stage of the Magid. And I want to go through with you and share certain insights. The first paragraph, by the way, is not written in Hebrew. It's written in a language called Aramaic. And Aramaic was the language of the day when the Haggadah was put together. And that's to tell us that if the language, speak in the language people understand. You don't have to read the Hebrew specifically. Speak in the language that people understand and, and get the message. So what is the message the Magid is going to tell you? There are many messages. All of them will lead to a place of personal freedom and personal perfection. Let's begin. This is the plain poor bread that our parents ate in the land of Egypt. Whoever is hungry, let him come and eat with us. Whoever needs a place to stay, come and make Pesach with us. This year we are here. Next year may we be in the land of Israel. This year we are not free. Next year may we be free to serve God perfectly. We start off and say, whoever is hungry, let him come and eat. Whoever is needy, let him come and celebrate Passover. What's interesting about this is that most people invite their Passover guests a month before Passover, two weeks before, a couple days before. We're sitting down at this stage for maybe a half hour. And now you're stopping and saying, hey, whoever's hungry, let them come for dinner. Whoever's needy, let them come and eat. It's a little crazy, actually. The reality is, if we want to become free, we have to get out of ourselves. 
freedom to serve God, freedom to be the kind of people I, we know that we should be, requires us to stop being self-centered. It requires us to get out of ourselves. And there's two kinds of ways that we can help others. One is whoever is needy, let him come. Whoever is hungry, let him come and eat. That's someone who's physically needy. They're physically deprived. Help to the best of our ability those people that have less than us. Give charity. Invite people to your home and help them. Feed them. And then it says whoever is needy, let them come and celebrate Passover. There are people who are spiritually needy. People that they don't know that God's running the world. They don't feel a presence of uh, a specialness in their life. They don't have a sense of confidence that, you know what, there's a divine plan at work here. And if you know somebody who is needy, spiritually needy, you have to understand they are poor and they need you to help reach out to them. The first step in becoming free is recognizing that life is not about me, it's about me helping others. And I can help people on a physical plane and I can help people on a spiritual plane. The next section that we're talking about is Avadim Hayinu. It says, we used to be slaves to Paro in Egypt, but Hashem our God reached out his strong arm and took us out from there. By the way, God does not have an arm. God is not physical. <laughs> if God had not saved us from Egypt, all of us, even our children and grandchildren, would still be slaves to Paro. So even if we are smart and know the Torah, it's a mitzvah for us to tell about the miracles that happened when the Jews left Egypt. The more someone talks about it, the more they deserve to be praised. The Hebrew is meshubach. Meshubach means improved. The more we talk about important concepts in life, the better people we become. This next part talks about how there were five great rabbis, the greatest rabbis of the generation, who lived about 2,000 years ago. And it tells the story on how they stayed up all night long talking about the exodus of Egypt, from Egypt, until finally their students came and their students made them aware that, hey, it was daybreak and it was time to pray. What's very interesting about these five great rabbis is that none of them came from slaves. Each one of them, either their ancestors were part of the small part of the Jewish people that were not enslaved, or they were descendants from converts, or they were converts themselves. And they were great rabbis, and they were never enslaved. But yet, they felt so much a part of the Jewish people that they accepted the Jewish people's pain upon them, and they spoke about it as if it was them. It's another important lesson about becoming free, become, reaching our potential. We have to attach ourselves, empathize, sympathize, attach ourselves with a greater community. And if we're not part of a greater community, then we're by ourselves. And we won't really get the messages that are important for the greater community. The next part contains the part of the famous four sons. There's a wise child, an evil child, a simple child, and the child who doesn't even understand enough to ask. First point to understand is that no one, no two people are the same. And if we want freedom, you know, it works for that guy, doesn't necessarily work for that guy or work for me. King Solomon says, when you're teaching your children, Hana Hanar al Pidarko, teach a child according to his way, not your way. And in a certain sense, yeah, there are four sons that the Passover speaks, uh, Seder Haggadah speaks about. But at the same time, we have to remember that it's perhaps all four of these sons are part of us. Perhaps we contain all four of these kinds of attitudes contained in the sons. What are these? The wise child, he wants wisdom. He wants to know what he's doing. He wants to know meaning and purpose. The evil child, he wants to exclude himself. He, and that is our definition of exclusion. When a person says, you know what? I'm not part of you. I don't want to be part of my people. I don't want to be part of, uh, of, of growth. I don't want to be part of Torah. I, I want to move away from it. That's the evil son. Then there's a simple child. He's not dumb. He's the person who needs to be woken up. He's kind of sleeping through life. You know anybody like that? You know, it seems they get a message. They get a trouble over here. They get a joyful occasion over there. Nothing really means so much to them because they're kind of sleeping their way through life. And then there's the child who doesn't even understand enough to ask. That's the person whose parents die and he says, you know, my parents just want me to be happy. They would not want me to be sad or mourn, you know. They're just like, they're really just kind of disconnected with everything going on in life. 
We have all four parts of us. We got a part that wants wisdom and meaning. We got, a, we got a part that says, you know, just leave me alone. There's a part of us that's kind of sleeping. You know, just kind of hum de dum going through life. hum de dum de dum de dum And then there's kind of a part of us that is just really out to lunch. What's very interesting is the Torah here speaks about verses and relates a different verse to each child. It's the same verse that, that is connected with the evil child as the child that does not know enough to ask. And that's because if a person remains ignorant, eventually they become evil. Ignorance is, the, is a pathway to evilness. The next one, the next section says, perhaps we should start telling about the miracles of the leaving of Egypt on the first day of Nisan, because that is when Moses taught the mitzvah of Passover. And then it continues on explaining that, no, we actually celebrate Passover on the 15th day of the month of Nisan. Nisan is the name of the Hebrew month that we are in now. Why would you think that you would celebrate Passover on the first day of the month? Because that's when God promised the Jewish people that they would leave two weeks later on the 15th of the month. What's interesting about this is if I come and I promise you something, I say, you're coming to dinner in two weeks from now. Well, maybe you're coming for dinner, maybe you're not. I mean, generally, I fulfill my promises. But I'm a human being and I'm fallible. But when God says a promise, when God says something in the Torah, namely, if you fulfill my commandments and you exert an effort to do the absolute best that you can to fill my will, then you will live a very blessed life. Then God means it. That's why we think about it. That's why we say, you know what, maybe we should celebrate the exodus of Egypt right when God told us we were going to leave. Because if God says something, it's going to happen. Now we're up to the section where we read, it is a promise to Abraham that protected our forefathers and because the more than one nation has tried to destroy us, in every generation they try and destroy us, but God always saves us from them. We remind ourselves that just because we are Jewish, there's a lot of people who hate us. The reality, that's part of the deal with being part of a people that have to go forward and bring a sense of ethical monotheism into the world. There will be, the world is filled with good people and crummy people. And there's a lot of crummy people out there that simply don't like Jews. As a matter of fact, one of the questions when a person converts to Judaism, before they immerse themselves in a ritual bath, they have to say in front of a Jewish court that yes, they deny any, any inappropriate religious thoughts, thoughts about other gods, and they are committed to the Torah. They have to commit themselves to fulfill all the commandments in the Torah. And then the third thing is the rabbis say, do you realize that if you convert to Judaism, there will be a lot of people that will dislike you simply because you're Jewish? And they've got to understand that. And we remind ourselves on this night that we also remember that God redeems us. And our redemption is because God redeems us. When you're in your Passover Seder, you got to realize that sometimes they it takes a while. For example, my Passover Seder starts at 8 o'clock at night, goes till 3.30 in the morning. Okay. And I tell people, before you come to my house for Passover, you got to take a nap and have a bite to eat because we don't get to the food till midnight. But in your Passover Seder, you might want to skip a few pages. Now, and that's okay if you skip the right pages, but you have to still tell over the story about how the Jewish people were enslaved and how it was bitter and horrible for the Jews living in Egypt. And then finally, God comes to Moses and says, Moses, go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And he lets the people go. And then how does he let, how does Moses get Pharaoh to release the, the Jewish people? By bringing upon Egypt the 10 plagues. The, all 10 plagues eventually took 10 months to go through. It took a week of warning, it took a week of a plague, and then two weeks for everyone to calm down and, and Paro to harden his heart again to say no for the next plague. The Jewish people leave Egypt. In the morning they pick up, they take their matzah, and they go. They go for seven days until they, their backs are against the Sea of Reeds. Paro, in last remnant of his army, goes and chases the Jewish people, and then God splits the sea. Right here, you see the Jewish people walking through the sea with miracles in abundance, walking on dry land, walking in a, in a way that 
that the Almighty is protecting them. God destroys the remnants of the Egyptian army and the Jewish people finally sing the Song of Moses where they recognize that they are truly finally free. It's not the end of the story. The end of the story is really when the Jewish people travel for the next, uh, you know, the next 42 days to make it to Mount Sinai and then they actually receive the Torah and the Ten Commandments and receive their national mission of becoming a light into the nations. But for the purpose of the story, we've completed it. We want to get to the point of a recognition of all the good things that God has done for us. That is that very special song that we sing, Dayenu, Day, Dayenu, where God, where we recognize and each one of the blessings that God did for us, or each one of the favors God has done for us, and we see each one would have been enough and God still gave us more. And then at the end, we get to the point where we say, in every generation, each person must feel as if he personally had gone out of Egypt. You have to know what your Egypt is. You got to know, what are you enslaved to? What is your vice? What is the thing that's holding you back? And realize that this is a guidebook. This is, a, is an entire holiday of focusing on getting back to basics, focusing on humility, focusing on who you are and who you truly want to be. When we finish this, the end, we drink a second cup of wine, we wash our hands, we start sitting down, we eat our matzah, we eat our moror, we have a discussion around the table about what it means to us to be Jewish and what are the wonderful things we'd like to accomplish in our lives. The third cup of wine is drunk at the end of the meal, and that's the, that is right around the time when we celebrate the cup of Elijah. Yes, the prophet Elijah, Eliyahu, our tradition tells us that his spirit comes to visit every Passover Seder as, he, as a testimony to that the Jewish people are still going to remain connected to, to the Lord, connected to God's will. We're going to continue to finish the Passover Seder by reciting the Hallel. These are different psalms that are mentioned uh, as a way, as means of, of inspiring us to be more grateful to God. And finally, the fourth cup of wine is drunk, ending the Seder with Lashana Habab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem, where we stand and we sing and we dance with great optimism that just as the Almighty has redeemed us before, in a national sense, the Almighty will redeem us today on a personal level and as a people and as a people amongst all peoples where the Almighty will bring a certain perfection to the world with a herald of the coming of the Messiah soon in our days. Want more wine? Turn your radio to AM 720 KDWN or go online to therabbishow.com to hear The Rabbi Show starting right after the news at 9 a.m. So I'd like to encourage you today to go to therabbishow.com and make some kind of donation. Everything is appreciated in order to help us continue to spread these positive values and enrich and enhance other people's lives. Thank you.